Hello, my name is Dr. Robert Dunderville. I've been taking care of patients in our community for many years. In fact, the physicians of Retina Consultants have a combined 70 plus years of experience in treating disorders involving the retina. We have diagnosed you or are concerned about a condition that affects your eye. The video you are about to watch explains this and reviews the risks and benefits of treatment. Choosing to undergo any form of treatment or surgery can be a difficult decision to make. Please be assured that we will make every effort and take every precaution necessary in helping you to make the best decision possible. Despite our best intentions, however, some people may experience side effects from their medication or surgery. These cannot always be predicted or prevented. The risk of potential side effects should always be balanced with the likely greater risks of leaving your condition alone, the most significant of which is loss of vision. Our staff would be happy to discuss and answer any questions or concerns that you may have after watching the video. Thank you. When you visit your ophthalmologist, he or she may need to take special photographs of your retina, the light-sensitive layer of cells lining the back of your eye. The retina is responsible for detecting light, which, in turn, allows you to see. The process of taking photos of the back of your eye is called angiography. Angiography helps your ophthalmologist see what is happening in the retina or in the blood vessels under the retina, called the choroid. Ophthalmologists use angiography to help diagnose and monitor certain eye conditions, such as diabetic retinopathy and macular degeneration, among others. Also, if you're going to have laser surgery on your retina, your ophthalmologist may use angiography to help guide the laser with pinpoint accuracy. After laser surgery, angiography may be used to help monitor the effect of the laser procedure. With angiography, a colored dye is injected into a vein in your arm or in your hand where it travels throughout the blood vessels in your body. As the dye passes through the eye's blood vessels, a special camera takes photographs of the retina or choroid blood vessels. These images allow your doctor to see if there are abnormal blood vessels in or under the retina. If you have symptoms such as blurred or distorted vision, your ophthalmologist can locate any leaking blood vessels in the retina that may be causing these symptoms. Blurry or distorted vision are the hallmarks of common eye diseases such as macular degeneration or diabetic retinopathy. Angiography can show if there is any blockage in retinal blood vessels. It can also help show swelling or tumors in the eye. Your ophthalmologist also uses angiography to precisely locate areas of the retina to be treated with laser eye surgery. Two types of dyes can be injected into the vein. One dye is called fluorescein, which is bright yellow. Fluorescein angiography is the best way to examine the blood vessels in the retina. The best way to see the choroidal blood vessels is with endocyanine green, or ICG dye. This is because the choroidal blood vessels are hidden beneath a layer of colored cells in the retina. With ICG angiography, light released by the ICG dye can be seen through the colored cells. When you are going to have angiography, special eye drops are put into your eyes to make your pupil dilate or widen. Then your ophthalmologist or an assistant will insert a very thin needle into a vein in your arm and inject the dye. As the dye passes through the blood vessels in the retina and choroid, a special camera will take a series of photographs to be reviewed by your ophthalmologist. The entire procedure usually takes less than 20 minutes. If the dye leaks from your vein, a burning sensation may occur on the skin at that site. Because your pupils have been dilated, your eyes may be sensitive to light. Bring sunglasses with you to your appointment to help with glare and light sensitivity when you leave the office. Also, your vision will probably be blurry after dilation, so it's a good idea to have someone drive you home afterwards. Your vision may appear darker or have a colored tint after the procedure. This will last only a few minutes. After the fluorescein dye is injected, your skin may turn yellowish for several hours. And also, because your kidneys remove the dye from your body, your urine will turn dark orange or yellow for up to 24 hours following the test. Some people may feel tired, lightheaded, or nauseous after having the dye injected. Also possible are vomiting, headache, fainting, itching, or hives. Alert your ophthalmologist if you experience any of these side effects. 
Rarely, people may have an allergic reaction to fluorescein dye, such as a skin rash or itchy skin. Severe reactions are very uncommon, but could include trouble breathing. This rare occurrence would be treated with antihistamine drugs as needed. Be sure to tell your ophthalmologist if you have asthma or breathing problems. ICG dye contains iodine. Iodine is also found in shellfish and in the substance used in contrast x-rays. People who are allergic to iodine may have severe allergic reactions to ICG dye. If you are allergic to shellfish or if you've had a reaction to medical dyes in the past, be sure to tell your ophthalmologist. Many potentially blinding eye diseases, such as diabetic retinopathy, are only diagnosed through complete medical eye exams. Your ophthalmologist may rely on angiography to find where problems may exist or to help guide and monitor treatment. If you have any questions about angiography, be sure to talk with your ophthalmologist.